As the Prime Minister said, we've been preparing for weeks since January 19th. We have been uh, launching our operational readiness. We started by beefing up resources in our Warsaw, Vienna, uh, Bucharest offices and preparing London for an influx of additional digital applications. We also on the same day started prioritizing uh, applications that were already in our inventory and have so far had in excess of 2,000 applications approved from uh, Ukrainians who had some sort of an application within IRCC. Uh, just the other day, uh, we launched a dedicated services channel, so Ukrainians who are seeking to take advantage of certain programs can reach us more quickly by phone, uh, by web form, uh, and use the. Uh, if you are using the web form, I would urge you to use the keywords Ukraine 2022, and your email will be prioritized. Uh, we've also launched new measures already for Ukrainians who are already in Canada that will make it easier for them to stay by extending their temporary status and issuing work permits to them so they can provide for themselves while they are here. We have taken nothing off the table for looking for additional solutions, as we will be looking to do the very Canadian thing of helping those in need, and in particular, the people of Ukraine who have some of the strongest people-to-people -people ties of any country in the world. When I look at the fact that there are more than 1 million Ukrainians in Canada today, this is something that we should do. It's something that we will do. Um... Can you tell me more about the delays? I mean, for someone who is in Ukraine, Ukraine for now, like people need to send papers or send their passport in order to get the visa. So the consular services are, are in Poland now. So how will the Ukrainian do this technically? Yes, and I say that not, not because I'm an optimist by nature, but because we've been preparing for more than a month now. As I mentioned during a previous answer, uh, we started an internal task force within IRCC on January 19th to identify how we could boost our resources. Uh, originally in, in Ukraine at both our, our Kyiv and Lviv uh, uh, locations, uh, but then by uh, providing additional resources to Warsaw, uh, Bucharest and Vienna uh, with some additional preparation in London. Uh, this included uh, getting large volumes of the materials that we need to, pretend, uh, to print travel documents and making sure that we're prepared to process and print them and deliver them in, in an urgent way. Uh, I do have confidence that we're prepared to deal with this more quickly than we have uh, ever before. Uh, and because we've been preparing for a number of weeks, uh, I feel that we're well equipped to deal with a potential influx of applications in a short period of time. Um, are you considering lifting the visa requirements for Ukrainians who would like to come to Canada? So uh, right now, uh, we, we are looking at every option. Uh, we've considered uh, a number of different uh, angles that we can uh, look at this, including uh, by engaging members of the Ukrainian Canadian community uh, to examine what the right approach will be. Uh, the, I do want to reiterate, though, uh, that there are significant measures that have already been put in place. And I just do want to address uh, one of the questions that came up previously in respect to one of the challenges that we've found uh, compared to Afghanistan. And I want to credit uh, Minister Jolie, who's in the room with you there, uh, one of the pinch points in Afghanistan involves very different facts where the Taliban have seized control uh, and have uh, prevented us from securing safe passage outside of the country for vulnerable people who are uh, inside Afghanistan that we've made a commitment to. With the situation in Ukraine, uh, to the West, Minister Jolie has already secured uh, agreements to secure the safe passage of Canadian citizens and permanent residents with uh, Moldova, Slovakia, Poland, Romania, and Hungary. Uh, with respect to your question uh, about visa uh, requirements, uh, there's different options that we are looking at, whether it's family reunification and sponsorship, whether it's uh, different uh, existing programs that we can make more flexible, or whether it's a refugee response or some combination thereof. Uh, but I do want to reiterate for those who may be eligible for the measures that we've already implemented, if you have an application in the inventory or make one now, it will be treated on a priority basis. If you are someone who is in Ukraine or in Canada from Ukraine now, we will be extending your temporary status and issuing you a work permit. We're going to have more to say on the different measures we're going to be implemented, uh, implementing in the days and weeks ahead. And I would urge you to continue to look for reliable information through Government of Canada channels to understand exactly what, uh, what shape these measures are going to take in the next few days. And as for a target of uh, the number of Ukrainians we could welcome here in Canada, I didn't hear you say one earlier when you were, were asked by my coworker. 
Uh, look, we haven't established uh, uh, yet an, an official target for the number. I think we're going to be looking at the circumstances as they continue to unfold. Uh, but I would remind folks, in addition to any special measures that we may be advancing in the near future, uh, there are also existing measures that Ukrainians qualify for through Canada's ordinary immigration streams that will be processed in an expedited way. So I would urge those who have questions about Canada's immigration programs to use the web form, to use the dedicated uh, service channel that we've established uh, by email or by phone, uh, so you can flag your interest in participating in some of these immigration programs. And we will have more to say this in the very near future future.